Jason Lee Podcast. Welcome back to our new episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. <laughs> oh my God. I woke up today thinking today was Monday. Me too. And it ain't Monday. You know what today is? Funky Friday. Uh, well, it's Monday when you get this podcast, but today is actually Funky Friday. And the reason why I'm saying it's Funky Friday is because today, which by the time you see this would have been last Friday, my episode with uh, Cam Newton has dropped. Uh, I went to Atlanta and did the Funky Friday show. I ain't gonna lie. I know Cam Newton to be Cam Newton, and I'm a fan of Cam Newton, and uh, I'm a fan of his show. I enjoyed myself. I went and did the interview in Atlanta uh, and literally had the time of my life sitting across from this man. Now, I have to tell you, he's fine as hell. <laughs> Cam Newton is fine. I couldn't Finer say that. Finer than on camera? He looks better in person than he does on camera. And Cam, I can say this because I'm not saying it to your face. I'm being very homosexual from a distance. <laughs> um, very good looking, uh, very masculine. He is a man, man's man in a straight way. Uh, he's also the father of my friend uh, 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 Jazzy's baby. And, uh, and I'm happy for them. Congratulations. I congratulate them on the show. But he's so good looking and he's so... He's just dope. I love the fact that Cam can sit across from a man who he knows is gay and be comfortable in his skin. As he talked about, he's straight as a line in the street. And I told him I'm a drunk driver without the alcohol. You know, he was able to have a conversation with me about topics. And what I texted him and said was, I love how our interview had a lot of serious conversation to it. But we wove in the entertainment. We wove in the stuff that you show up for. Because if we just talked about that, you guys wouldn't be able to do it. Wouldn't be able to handle it. So I try to be entertaining. And I did a lot of what Jason Lee does and put a little seasoning on the conversation. But ultimately, we talked about everything from voting to running for office to helping kids to the donor dinner we did with uh, you know who to uh relationships to fatherhood to uh the world that we live in we also talked about shannon sharp and his hips that they don't lie i mean we did it all and i really just have to say man i walked away just so inspired by this creative experience that we all as, as podcasters or broadcasters do and he's somebody who's doing it right i felt comfortable i felt safe and Shout out to his team. Even the girl who was the president over there who made that horrible espresso that tried to kill me with that rusty uh, coffee. I told her it tastes like rust. Oh and my copper. God. It wasn't that bad. But they were really good. And I just, I, I just want to say I had a great time. I'm a fan of Cam. I think we're becoming friends. And uh, damn, he looks good. Cam knew you look good. Big old, you know, you're just a little too big for me. Uh, and a little too straight for me, but yeah. Other than that, uh, Cam Newton, it totally, totally enjoyed you. You, you guys watched the interview. What'd you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I love how we let you talk. You were just the topics were flowing naturally, and his set is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, back to what you said, I, the thing I liked most about it was you talked about topics that are taboo or hard to talk about in the black community, and you guys had a free exchange as a straight man and a gay man about topics that quite often we don't agree on. Um, and I think that this is the perfect setting for that to happen so people can like digest what both of your perspectives were. I just loved it. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it was good. And, you know, I, I didn't feel like it was a gay or straight conversation. It was just a conversation about ideas and positions and pause and thoughts. <laughs> uh, but it was really good. You know, um, I, and also when I was in Atlanta, did I talk about Kim Burrell here? Uh, no. So I went to the, oh my God. <laughs> I went to the BMI Gospel Award. Shout out to Catherine Bruton, my friend, uh, who is you know close to my heart. She had an event called the BMI Gospel Awards, and when she, when I tell you, she sat me at the table of all the people that I know will be rowing the boat to heaven. <laughs> I sat right behind Yolanda Adams, right across from Karen Clark Sh Sh uh, Sheard and Dorinda Clark Cole. Right in front of Yolanda Adams was Kirk Franklin, and right to my left was Kiara Sheard and Kim Burrell. As you know, Kim Burrell, she's had to catch a couple, you know, hits over here because of some of the stuff that she said that we've seen that's gone viral. But they orchestrated me having a conversation with Kim. I didn't go there intending to talk to her. I've seen Kim at a few <laughs> events, and we've seen each other in locked eyes and haven't talked. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I never know if people see what I say, although I know I'm the king of the internet and all of you can't wait to make myself go viral, but she was, they brought her over to me and I was finishing the conversation. When I walked up to her, she grabbed me and, 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 uh, you know, I'm in this therapeutic sober space now where I get a little emotional at times, but she looked at me and she said, um, uh, I, I just 
Well, I'm glad that we're able to talk today. You know, I know that you felt the way that you felt. I saw what you said. And the only thing I thought is, when did you stop loving me? And it it really kind of made me feel sorry, not sorry for her, but just sorry for the whole way it all went down because I do have a job where when this thing turns on, I have a job to do and I say what I think and what I feel and I try to stay as true and authentic to that. But you know, my relationship with Kim Burrell goes all the way back to when 2012, when Whitney Houston came and performed at my party and died the next day, Kim Burrell came the following year. Mm -hmm. Rob and I did a whole tribute to Kim Burrell, uh, to uh, Whitney Houston with Kim Burrell and, and Queen Latifah was there and all the people that Jordan Sparks and stuff. And so it was a very special thing. Now, when Kim Burrell came to that event, we did not have the greatest experience, but that's in that moment while I was talking to her. And the reason why it wasn't because her message was great. Uh, her performance was great because she performed a song, the, the song that we saw her and Whitney Houston sing on, on, on uh, TV at the BET event. It was her attitude. It was the way that she was talking and acting that for such an important moment, I felt some type of way. And in that moment when she was sitting there saying, when did you stop loving me? You know, I never stopped loving Kim Burrell, the artist, or Kim Burrell, the musician. Uh, what I stopped loving was somebody that I thought was just full of hate and spewing things I thought uh, was a direct attack against my community. And so in that moment, because um, I've seen her with Tyrese a couple times, once at Clive's party and once at... Uh, the Black Music Collective this year for the Grammys, and I didn't speak to her. And I said to her, I said, Kim, it's not that I stopped loving you. I just don't understand what all that was. And if you want to reconcile and talk about it, you can come on my show. We can sit down and have a conversation because, as you know, we interviewed Yolanda Adams here on the show, and I asked Yolanda what she thought about it. Um, and since then, uh, Kim has gone on the Tamron Hall show and kind of threw some shade at Yolanda. Mm -hmm. So I said to her, we can reconcile and have a conversation about it, but I want to be clear, you have the right to believe whatever your God tells you he feels. And you have a right to say that. But I have a right to have a different opinion. And I have a right to defend my opinion like you have a right to defend yours. And I'm not telling you, this is what I said to her, I'm not telling you that you are required to change what you believe. You just have to be able to stand on what you believe. And so we had a really good exchange. We exchanged numbers. I haven't texted her. I, I probably talk, call her this week or text her this week and invite her on formally. But I think maybe even like a lunch before or talking to her before just to kind of understand, you know, what we both want to come out of that experience could be great because Kim Burrell is an iconic member of the gospel community and they were loving on her and she was loving on them. And she was trying, I can tell, to really be in it again with everybody because people have kind of distanced themselves in some regard to Kim but nonetheless, everybody, I said this many times, deserves redemption. And, and Kim could be one of those if she wants to clarify those viral moments that we've seen. But we've seen a few, and some would say we've seen enough. And I hope to be able to provide space to talk. But, you know, I love you, Kim, and there's no permanent enemy of anybody over here. But, you know, we got to go through the fire when the fire is set uh, ablaze by comments made on the Internet. And I'm very unapologetic about how I feel. What do you think about Kim Burrell? I mean, are you still a fan? I mean, I take issue with her perspective and she's very, very vocal about her. I don't want to, I don't know if I should call it disdain for the gay community or her, her disapproval. Um, and she has the ear of a lot of people. Uh, so for me, when people take that stance very publicly, it's hard for me to get behind them. Yeah. Well, and let's be clear. She was surrounded by the gays <laughs> and yeah. there were lots of gays at this gospel award show. You know, the gays are out there. They're in your churches. They're doing your hair, makeup. They're gay, okay? And I think that when you, the Lord that I serve, I don't believe the God and the Lord that I serve is someone that hates gay people. In fact, I didn't see anywhere in the Bible where it says, I hate gay people or gay people are condemned to hell. Now, people have had their own interpretations of this book, and this is what I will say. The Bible does say, no one sin is greater than another. So when you lie about the weight on your driver's license, when you lie about your husband <laughs> and this, when you have a kid outside of wedlock, you know, when you steal, all those things that God did say, or, or the, the, the commandments say that those are things that are sins. And But the Bible also allows people the space to be redeemed. And I think that uh, when we start to pick and choose when the Bible loves and doesn't love people, you're basically saying that God was a hateful God. And I don't know that he was a, a hateful person, a hateful spirit or whatever, and Jesus was a hateful person. Um, I also believe that when people talk about religion and try to weaponize religion as a way of making their arguments 
hit harder for people. You know, you got to be careful with that because, again, the Jesus that I read about in the book was out there looking for the hookers and the people who were, you know, deemed bad people or unworthy of, uh, you know, love or whatever type of people. And God, Jesus actually went out and sought those people. So I, I don't know. I don't get caught up in people's whole disdain for the gay community. But I will say I had a really interesting conversation with Kirk Franklin and we were talking about how the church is trying to bring people in who don't look like them or may not be what they're on, but how do we keep people, how do we build bridges to bring more people into the church? And I thought um, Kirk's point of view was really interesting. And so he, when he comes to LA, he says he'd like to come on the show. And you know, Kirk is such an icon, but I spent a whole day with the gospel people. And uh, Dorinda, as you know, she's somebody who's part of the Clark sisters. She has that whole uh, album where she was giving roses to people. I came dressed in all red as a rose straight from the Cam Newton show. So over there, I was talking about <laughs> dropping dick off. And then, you know, before that, I was a rose for the gospel community, <laughs> you know? But that, that's that's who Jason Lee is. All the while, running for city council. Period. We're not a monolith. We can be multiple things. Absolutely. Right? But that's Absolutely. what makes you you. That's There's what layers. makes Right. But, but, you know, when you think of politicians or people running for office, you think of people who are... The, 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 the politics as usual done like people who just want to dress up in their suit no. but behind the scenes you know they got their grinder account ringing every day and then there's why are you looking around <laughs> this is the truth and i think that's the problem right? like when, with politics they put on a facade and they're not allowed to truly be who they are right so behind closed doors they're acting out the things that are really important to them and then they're in public voting against the things that they actually really want like what kind of life is that right and this is why i say to all of you watching if you're a fan of me a fan of the show fan of whatever please make sure that you get registered to vote uh and that when you vote you vote for people who show you who they are find the person who can show you their flaws because any politician who tries to be the perfect politician and all buttoned up and no flaws that's the person with the most teeth you know what i mean I, everything about me the people in stockton california that see me putting our city on the map and that are that out there building positive narratives and hopeful opportunities and showing you what i'm doing and and putting my money where my mouth is literally i'm showing you that you can be cool and have a cool job and be flawed but be smart and resourceful and have a vision for how you want your community to look and that's why i think i'm winning that's why i know i'm winning because people i feel connected to the people mm -hmm. i'm i'm you you're them and look at the end of the day every single person watching has a flaw every single person has something that they do want to fix everybody has a dream that they want to live out everybody has hopes whatever but if you look at where i've come come from and where i've come and how far i've come and where i am now Clearly, we all want to have that experience. So, so I, I know Stockton's going to get it right. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. We get right right to it. Let's <laughs> jump right in. Well, let me see. Where is it at? It's time for the tea with Jason Lee. Hmm. You know... We haven't really had a lot to talk about when it comes to Krishan Rock because Blueface is in jail and the Blueface Circus is on hiatus. But she's in the news because James Wright Chanel has gone ahead and, um, you know, he's going after her. But he's healing too. Tamar Braxton's background singer and friend, James Wright Chanel, is breaking his silence after the viral fight between him and Krishan. This happened at Tamar's concert last year. Remember, we talked a lot about the fact that it looked like Tamar and her friends were cloud chasing, bringing good old Krishan down there uh, to hang out and twerk, but not perform, which doesn't make sense. Well, Tamar's team is claiming that Krishan was invited to the concert last November to take part in a twerk contest, but Krishan says she was asked to perform. So when she never got the chance to do so, she caused a whole scene on stage. Some would say she was drunk, but she told me personally that she only had one drink. And when everyone returned backstage after the show, things got violent with her... Uh, Allegedly. Allegedly uh, assaulting James Rice Chanel. Now, James claimed that he walked in with Krishan and she was allegedly arguing with people about her not being able to perform. And during the argument, he got attacked and had his teeth knocked out. Why are you guys laughing? Because your delivery. I said he got his teeth knocked out and then you guys both laughed. 
Well, we never saw his mouth without teeth, and we did see him go viral in the dentist's office where he was off camera saying that they were gone. When And when the teeth get knocked out or fall out, you hear a certain, like there's a wind factor that happens in between the tooth, right? And so we didn't hear that because I'm not a speech expert, but I was listening, and I didn't hear uh, the speech change. But from what Tamar told me is that there was this was a very emotional thing. Now, let's be clear. Tamar is no longer a friend of Hollywood Unlocked, no longer a friend to the show. And she's no longer a friend of mine. Because what I learned about Tamar is that the only time Tamar actually liked me and that the only time Tamar actually utilized me is when Tamar benefited. And it's unfortunate, you know, she's going to feel some type of way and say it's not true and this and that. And that's the thing I learned about Tamar. She has built a world that she believes is real, like Wakanda, you know? <laughs> Like Wakanda is an imaginary world that we all want to feel and believe is real. And some would say, arguably, Africa is Wakanda, but Africa is Africa and Wakanda is the make-believe world. And there aren't blue people flying around. Oh, that's... Avatar. (laughs) Well, you know what I mean. That's make-believe too. You're saying she's Delulu. I'm not saying she's delusional. What I'm saying is that Tamar is not all she's cracked to be. Okay, and what I've learned about Tamar is that um, misery loves company, and I have said that's a reservation one. I'm cool. She and follow me. I follow. We're good. It's good, and it's all love. It's no beef. I'm not being shady. I'm just saying, you know, I'm being honest because I told Tamar to her face that I felt that they were using this girl for clout, and that's why Tamar unfollowed me because as her friend, she wants me to go and say, "We know that girl went down there to do a twerk contest." Why would Krishan Rock? who was the hottest thing on the internet at the time. She's silent now and inactive. But, I mean, at the time, why would she go down to twerk at Joe Concert that they said the ticket sales were struggling? I don't know. Why would she go down there? You you brought her down there because you wanted the clout. You wanted the you wanted this. But in the, in, in the realm of getting all this, your friend allegedly got his patty pie tooth knocked out, and then your tour manager said you're a lie and a cheat and this and that, and he quit, and now he's out. You know what I mean? And it was because the clout monster that you created created a toothless situation. I found tooth in a toothless place. Okay? Well, anyway, in February, a bench warrant was reportedly issued for Krishan after the whole incident as she allegedly violated her probation. Now, that same month, James Wright Chanel also pressed criminal charges over the incident and sued Krishan for the assault, battery, and emotional distress. Now, he's alleging that she used a homophobic slur towards him, which... Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Krishan. I don't... If she did, I don't think it means she's, like, homophobic. I think it's one of those things where she might have just said it, but it doesn't mean she's homophobic. But you think she called like faggot? Possibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe it. I think she she's she's a she a street girl. I think she it slipped said that. when she was here. That word slipped. Mm-hmm. Did she? I cut it out. Who she cut? Who she talking to? She who she called faggot? Blue. When they were in my terms. But I yeah, <laughs> I believe it. Okay, well maybe she did. I, <laughs> I got the receipts. <laughs> well, James is now speaking out about his healing journey, which includes him suffering from trauma that causes him to wake up. Out of his sleep crying. Uh, and here's. <laughs> Take a look. Okay, so I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why this happened. Why did this happen to me? Um, I wasn't in an argument with anyone. I wasn't going back and forth or arguing with anyone. None of that took place. Now, what I walked in on was that with mm-hmm. other people, not me. Right. When I got in there, I was consoling the person, like, because the person was crying. I'm like, why are you crying? What happened? Mm-hmm. And when the story got explained to what happened, I was like, oh. And it was just boom, boom. After that, it, everybody's mouth dropped to the, I, everybody's mouth literally dropped. When I like came back to it, everybody's mouth was still like, it was unbelievable. Because it was for no reason. Mm-hmm. And, and you didn't even see it coming, did you? No, at all. Because yeah. there was no reason for it. Right. So um, the crazy thing is, like I've said on social media, um, this is the, the part I want to talk about, the processing part. Because I would wake up, and I haven't even said this to you publicly, I would wake up and 
wake up out of my sleep crying. Shut up. And not knowing why. And not knowing what that meant. So when I contacted the therapist, she said, it's trauma. Hmm. And so she was like, trauma will wake you up out of your sleep. And I was like, but I was crying. I was crying in my sleep. I don't know. She was like, you was crying in your sleep. She was like, mentally, I was thinking about it in my sleep. Right. Because I still don't know. I don't bother nobody. You don't. I don't argue with people. I don't get online and cut up and do what everybody else is doing. I don't do none of that. So I had to question God. Mm, that's deep. And I was like, because mm. let me tell you, a couple of days after I was like, Lord, I'm, you suck. <gasps> that's how I felt. Right. That's really, that's how you feel. That's how yeah. I felt because right. I did not understand. Oh, Jesus. I'm trying not to get emotional. I, like I said, I was, I was angry with God. Mm -hmm. I was angry. And the Lord told me, he said, it's not about you but it had to happen to you. And let me tell you the other thing. He said, in this, so many people are going to learn lessons, which were the people that were around. Mm -hmm. And so many different things been happening to people. God said, I'm trying to open up the other folks' eyes, right. but I got to use you. Mm -hmm. You got to set that example. So in yeah. that moment, when he spoke to me, it was like, you, you my, you my strong person. When he said it had to happen to you, and then in that moment I said, okay. The crazy thing is, I, I went into worship in that moment. Hmm. At home, I was at home in that moment. And I went into worship because, like, people don't understand God is good. Because the thing is, I could have lost my life. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know the right. Hit you, you could be out of here. Out. It could right. have been a lot worse. Brain dead, vegetable, right. anything. Yeah. And we know that you and Tamar are very good friends. Mm -hmm. And she eventually did speak out, but a lot of people were saying, why didn't she speak out a lot sooner? As um, far as the situation. So the thing is, um, I want I wasn't going to speak out. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't going to speak out. But I feel like for her, I feel like she was even a week later, she was still in shock. She called me every day, every second, every minute, every hour, every, like. Because mm -hmm. sometimes in situations like that, you don't know what to say. You don't. Yeah. Especially when it's no reason for it. Mm -hmm. It's like, what do I, what, what do, yeah. I'm lost. What do I say? Um, that was on the Just uh, Us podcast. The Lord didn't come to you. The Lord did not <laughs> talk to you about Krishan Rock. I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe people talk to the Lord, but the the Lord did not come to you in your sleep or in your wokeness, James, and talk to you about Krishan Rock. Why did you say the Lord, my Lord sucked? Because y'all let, who let the dogs out? Y'all did. Y'all invited Krishan Rock over there. Y'all wanted her to be there. Your boss, Tamar Braxton, your BFF, who you be at her house doing karaoke and chicken wings and 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 and, and, and uh, okras. Y'all created this experience, and then you got what you wanted because y'all tried to play her. She told me Krishan did from her own mouth that. She came on stage when she was told to go out there and the DJ said, I was told not to play your music. But why would you bring the girl down there out of her house? And she said it was seven of y'all and it was her. And she had one glass of uh, something to drink. Maybe she had more because, you know, Krishan, I believe you were lying about that. But who cares? Y'all try to play her and she realized what was happening, in my opinion, and she popped off and she popped you in your mouth. Because you were probably loud mouthing her. Girl, 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 you probably doing all that. And she, and she, she probably let you have it. Now, I think you're doing all of this commentary because you're trying to build a case to get more money. This is what you do. Oh, the trauma that'll wake you up in the middle of your sleep. No, mm -mm, no, uh, I don't believe it. Do you believe it? No. I mean, we all process trauma differently, but this is like how you process trauma when you were 12 and you got in this fight like at school and you woke up a little bit rattled after the fight. Come on now. Like as a grown man, you waking up crying because Krishan slapped you. Or punch you, whatever. I just, I don't know. Good and, luck. and you, and you, and you, you chastise Jesus. <laughs> when did Jesus enter you the chast chat? You chastise Jesus over Christian Rock, <laughs> baby. You're playing with, you are playing with your VIP pass to heaven over Christian Rock. Now I don't know that you're going to get much money because the Zeus checks have stopped and Blue Circus is at a standstill, <laughs> and I don't know where Christian is at this point. 
Well, the rumor is that Blue and Krishan are going to join Tronics. I did see that on Hollywood Unlocked. Mm -hmm. um, Blue's still in jail till July. Mm -hmm. So them Tronic checks ain't coming till July. The math ain't mathing for me. Um, it looks like your tooth is fixed, though. So I don't know if there's an old photo or whatever. Um, and I like James. I like James. But I just, to me, because the way Tamar, all this went out. And the thing that, that really bothered me is that Tamar, your whole team drug your business on the internet for filth. And they went, they dragged it for so long that it kept you in the news while you kept selling more tickets. And then you ended up getting back with that guy after he went with Tommy. The whole thing is just, and then, you know, she doesn't want to be on a reality show, but yeah, you, you're loving hip hop Atlanta. <laughs> Not housewife, because she didn't get a ring yet. I mean, she got a ring, right? But she ain't married. Oh, I heard they're broke. I heard. Allegedly. Shree's told me they broke up. Now, let me ask you a question. If Tamar Braxton, side note, Tamar Braxton and her beau, her boo, the white dude, mm -hmm. separate after she went through all that with Tommy. Is that an L? Fat L. It's already an L, right? It was she already got, an L. She got clicks and, you know. When she took him back platforms. after he was out with Tommy at the game, that was already No, that L. was the L. But I mean, like, yeah. if you did all that, plus lost the relationship with yeah. me, plus all, plus all this, that's the L. <laughs> okay, bye. I promise you this show is about positivity and my opinions and the views of the world and really m moving the culture forward. But I don't really care for this person right here. And I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about the story because it's on the, it's on the, it's on the paper here. But you know, this night, Better Brothers LA, this is where this was taken. I was there that night. I believe I was, I was presenting with Shirley Ralph and I ended up giving $40,000 away to student scholarships on behalf of Tiffany Haddish. It was a beautiful night, but I was on the red carpet with her and she, she's just a, she just has a nasty demeanor about her. And I don't know if it's because she's like a low key elitist Republican underneath this lesbian of a drag show that she has <laughs> on the red carpet, but Raven Simone is not, um, she doesn't give you warm and fuzzy. I'm here to see you. She was very cold on the red carpet. And she didn't know who I was, which I loved because I was able to see who she was. And she was very, there was a weird moment on the carpet where people were coming over to talk to me clearly. And they were like getting in her way. And she was very like, you know, in a real, real Karen way. But anyway, Raven, I've always found to be odd. I think where I really started to dis not dislike her, but like not really care for her as much because we loved her when she was the little girl, Olivia, with mm -hmm. the little, oh, you know. And then she grew up and found a voice and she was on The View. I remember on The View, nobody liked her on The View. Nobody liked you, you know that. And then became a lesbian, joined our community, and we're like, why? Another one. <laughs> well, Raven Simone is now yeah. reflecting on some old comments that she made, specifically from 2014, when she told the world that she was not an African, that she was American, not an African American. Now, Raven was speaking to Black culture's own Oprah Winfrey, which is probably not the Black person to talk to when you say you don't feel like you're Black or African. And she was talking to Oprah and she demanded to not be labeled as African-American. And she set the internet on fire. Now, the craziest part was when she was talking to Oprah, her race or ethnicity had nothing to do with the conversation. She just threw that in there. The way they used to throw Molotov cocktails in Martin Luther King's homes when they were burning them down. Well, 10 years later, Raven Simone is now unpacking the controversial moment with her wife, Miranda Pierman Madej, on their podcast, Raven and Miranda. Now, the thing that I have to note about this is that you probably shouldn't be sitting talking to a white woman about how you didn't mean to offend the black community, even if it is your wife, because it's a white woman. Listen. So you don't want to be labeled gay. I don't want to be labeled gay. I want to be labeled a human who loves humans. I'm tired of being labeled. I'm an American. I'm not an African-American. I'm an American. Oh, girl, don't, don't set get up you the Twitter. Now, when that aired, I felt like the entire internet exploded and threw my name in the garbage. There was so much backlash from my community and others that misunderstood slash didn't hear the exact words that I said. And the exact words that I said is that I'm an American, not an African American. I'm an American, I'm not an African American, I'm an American. A lot of people on the internet thought I said that I wasn't black. 
And I never it's said a huge that. Difference. There's a difference between so being black and mean? African. When I say that African American does not align with me, that label, it doesn't mean that I'm negating my blackness or I'm not black. It means I am from this country. I was born here, my mom, my dad, my great, 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 great. And that's what I'm saying, the pure logistics of it. I understand my history. I understand where my ancestors come from. I also understand how much blood, sweat, and tears they've soaked into this earth in order to create the America that I live in today, free, happy, tax-paying American citizen. I understand what she's trying to say, but her whole delivery and everything and everything that you represent, even from the like funky blue hair you used to wear, like, I don't know, we just don't like it. <laughs> um, when people say I'm an African American, I understand that that is a sensitive conversation because I too acknowledge I'm a black American. I'm not born and raised in Africa, but I know that my ancestry goes back to Africa and I speak to that sometimes, but I understand what she's saying, but it's how she said it that to me just didn't hit right. And I think that we have to do a deeper dive into that whole dialogue. And when you unpack it, you should have probably unpacked it with somebody who could have been more educational mm -hmm. in taking this moment to actually explore what you were saying. I, I still think there's a funda fundamental underlying self-hatred going on um, because I can tell, having been around you a couple of times, you're not all the way comfortable with who you are. I don't know. I mean, you've lost the weight, so it's not because you're fat anymore. I don't know. You know, I don't. It's not fame because you're not as famous. I don't. I mean, maybe it is fame. I don't know. But I, I get what she was trying to say. I do, and I think that it was the the delivery was off. It's the same way as trying to say like African American history is American history, but they always try to separate it and limit us to one month of talking about it. So I get what she's saying, but it like on the on the cusp of her saying, I don't like labels. I don't want to be called gay. I'm not African American. I'm American. Well, that's still a label. So it was just very confusing with the way she delivered it. She didn't think nobody was going to be on the show that smart to pull that one right there <laughs> because you still labeled yourself. Yeah, yeah. labels label. But why you didn't want to be labeled an African-American? Is it some reason that you have some issue with Africa? Somewhere in your diluted blood, as Kenya told me, I had diluted blood. That was racist. I was like, diluted blood? My blood is, <laughs> my blood is red. Somewhere in your, your, your bloodlines, did somebody make you believe that African was bad? I think being from Africa is great. I think Africa is a, a beautiful country a beautiful content continent with beautiful countries and beautiful people and lots of beautiful culture and we have to stop shitting on africa by by claiming we're american everybody know we're american we get that okay but if you don't like labels why you choose that one huh hmm. <laughs> she what went she from mean? being like i'm a human being but i'm american i'm not african-american either but <laughs> we know we know <laughs> we know but listen. Wait, wait wait can we give you your flowers <laughs> For acknowledging that you're not African American, <laughs> your kid will be that. I'm not American either, <laughs> so I feel always weird talking about topics that I can't really chime in on. But I don't know. It's just weird. Raven is just a weirdo now. All the greats, like she's a cheetah girl. She's that so Raven. Like I grew up on Raven. Nikki, Kanye, all the greats I ever loved, they're getting weird. Why Kanye got to catch a stray? And Nikki <laughs> oh, is on straight. tour. Leave Nikki alone. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want no smoke. Can we just go one show without talking about that girl? Sorry. Side note, I did see a photo of Nikki um, uh, courtside at a game. She looked good. I mm. think she's she's definitely, I think she's on that Ozempic. She, Nikki, me and you might be taking the same medication because you look oh. good. All right. Uh, I hope to build a bridge with our community like I hope to build a bridge with her eyebrow. That <laughs> eyebrow cut right there is just, anyway. She just doesn't even look happy, does he? Does she? Maybe this she was should. the night where she was being awarded. I remember I was there. Maybe she should come unpack what's going on. Yes. on the Over here? Show. Yeah. To this African-American owned show? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, look, everybody is welcome here. I don't hate nobody. Um, I, I doubt she will be here and I'm not going to spend the resources to put Raven Simone. <laughs> All right. Bye. All right.
this person is definitely welcome to the show. I love her, Lizzo. She is tired of the criticism and she is tired of y'all messing with her good name. Lizzo is tired of the internet picking her apart and has, she's now issued a PSA to the critics. As we know, aside from Lizzo's online antics, rallying up fat shamers, she's also been dragged more recently after being named in shocking lawsuits filed by three former dancers. Last year, uh, Crystal uh, Williams, Noel Rodriguez, and uh, Ariana Davis alleged that Lizzo subjected them to harassment and toxic work environment. They even said she went, took them somewhere one time, put a banana in a vagina, or made them want to take a banana out of somebody's vagina. I don't know. We've been to the box before. Mm -hmm. We've seen craziest things. This actually made me not want to take any of my employees to the box. <laughs> because if you think a banana in a vagina is something, wait until a trans one trans woman comes out and puts a plunger up their ass and then shit falls out and then they pick the shit up and throw it in the audience. Shut Am I lying? Y'all saw that? I mm. yes, it's the box. Their own poop. <laughs> and threw it in the audience. In America? Wait, where is the box? <laughs> New York. <laughs> oh. London. <sighs> and while you're eating and drinking. <laughs> you like that? Why are you laughing about it? He that? likes shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't have fun at the box? I'm not a sh I'm not a shit. Did you have fun person. though at the box? Yeah, yeah. It's entertaining. Beyonce goes, everybody goes. It's a thing. Sean goes, well, you know, Sean, you know, he different. <laughs> well, the singers denied everything and even asked a judge to toss out the cases. Now, despite attempts to can uh, to be canceled, Lizzo's star continues to rise, and she's recently performed for President Joe Biden at his $25 million uh, Radio City fundraiser on March 28th. Now, reacting to the performance, Ron Zambrano, the lawyer for Lizzo's accuser, slammed Biden, calling him shameful for allowing Lizzo to hit the stage. And then responding to the criticism, Lizzo left fans believing that she was ready to quit. Uh, this is what she said online. I'm getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views, being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this shit. I quit. Well, reacting with the rest of the world, fellow singer and rapper Azalea Banks, who constantly receives criticism for, you know, playing with chicken bones and slamming Diddy and everybody else. She slammed Lizzo and then offered her some advice. This is what Azalea had to say. I took back my criticism of you because it definitely clicked in my mind that I definitely wasn't getting my point about the ways in which uh, insidious people in corporate culture were positioning you to push demeaning initiatives. But sis, your handle is Lizzo Be Eating. <laughs> Go back to the quote. <laughs> You've definitely given the public license to laugh at you. Laugh at with you by twerking at the Burger King counter and bathing in a tub of Skittles. Self-deprecation was certainly the aesthetic you chose to introduce yourself with. So I don't see why you'd play victim rather than just stop intentionally inviting people to make jokes about that. You're a beautiful girl with a handle on music theory, uh, Grammy Awards and tons of success. Just change the narrative and go highbrow uh, Philharmonic on these hoes and collab with, I don't know, Sakamoto. Do you think that there's some val valid points made there? 100%. Right? 100%. Yeah. Like, you are bathing in Skittles making DoorDash commercials, but you're upset about the no, narrative. No, she didn't make a DoorDash commercial. She got in a fight with the DoorDash person for not bringing her food. Remember? Oh, wait, she was in an Uber Eats or something. She's in one of those She got in a in fight with Uber Eats because the person, it was Uber Eats, the person didn't deliver her food, so she went after her and they were like, girl, you attacking Uber Eats online is just outrageous. <laughs> well, I know she's in a bathtub in a commercial and it's around food. So I don't know. Yes, she can. She constantly she built up this image of her being this big woman who eats things covered in mustard, and she's the watermelon. Yeah, all this stuff. Like that's the image she puts out. So I get it. Like I love her music. I love her voice. I love her talent. But that is part of what she's but created. We gave herself. her the fearlessness award here at Hollywood Unlocked at the Impact Awards because she is fearless in her attempt to 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 throw the fat shaming back at people. I think she does the skittle bathing and all the twerking and all that to be able to just force those who are struggling with fat phobia to accept the fact that fat lives matter too. And I think she's beautiful. I think, you know, Lizzo, you know how I feel about you. I think you're beautiful. I think that you are courageous, but you do welcome 
the criticism in volume when you're doing it. You were doing it at the uh, basketball game when Kobe was walking behind you and everybody was like, oh my God, you had the little G-string or something. You know, you put on a G-string in public, you already know somebody's gonna say something. <laughs> now I think black is beautiful and fat is beautiful in this instance, because all fat ain't beautiful, but neither is all black or all white or, or all anything. And so when you do things to, to get attention, you, you, you do get it. And so you have to be willing uh, to be able to take it without writing what appears to be a, a low key suicide note. You know, I'm on my way out, everybody, peace. You know, and we don't know what that means because when you put stuff on the internet, it's subjective to uh, our comprehension of what we're reading. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Marina? Do you think that she's just a little, you know, in, Look, her, in her feelings? This is what I have to say. DJ Khaled is not skinny and you don't see him with his like man boobs. Like he's just successful and big. Like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> big ish. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> DJ Khaled and them boobs be all on jet skis. Okay. He be doing true, everything. True, true, true. But he's they had, not like he had he had some people carry him to not get his shoes dirty. And his big ass needed two big ass security to do that. Yeah, we don't see him eating, but we know he be eating. If you go to his Snapchat, <laughs> exactly. Go to his Snapchat. He eating. Uh, okay, Fat big Joe. Meals, when meals. he was big. What about it? All I'm saying is you can be big without making it like. Let me eat this. Fat Joe's name is literally Fat. I know, and I'm Joe. skinny. <laughs> but I just feel like it doesn't have to be in our face like that. Like, and I love Lizzo too to death. And Lizzo is so talented. But I agree with us. Y'all just saying it because she's a woman. No, You're saying it no. She's a woman. I'm definitely not hating on Lizzo. No, I'm not hating. We on love her. Lizzo. But bad. I do think she played it up, and I think she played it up too long. Like, let that be the thing that was kind of like your thing that got you in. But now, like, rest on the power of your music because she's stunningly beautiful. Her music is amazing. Talented. Yeah, like lean into that now. I that was well, a joke. Uber. <laughs> You guys are messy. Well, Ron Zambrano, the lawyer for Lizzo's accusers, also reacted to Lizzo's PSA. Here's what he had to say. It's a lot. I ain't about to read all that. <laughs> you already, anytime y'all see something like this, you know I'm not about to read it. But he basically is saying that it's a joke that she would say she's bullied by the internet. Uh, and, uh, you know, she should take an honest look at herself. Well, here's the reality, Zambrano. What is a joke is the fact that you would ridicule the president of the United States for using Lizzo uh, to perform at an event for him. As you all know, there's not a lot of other people signing up to help Joey because people are not happy with the administration. So the fact that Lizzo, in the midst of her storm, would find the courage to stand up for the president who sometimes seems sleep at the wheel, literally, uh, that is an actual good thing for her. So you're just mad because your case right now has these claims that, you know, allegedly, allegedly look baseless because you have a bunch of fat girls sitting around saying that she called them fat. I mean, I don't know a bunch of fat people that sit around and fat shame each other, but this will be the first of... What? This would be the first of anything. I would want to see what the pill court looks like. Lizzo later clarified uh, her I quit announcement and shared this video to Instagram. Look. I... I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep being me. Once again, I just want to say thank you. The love that I've received whew, means more than you know. Now, you did that in the bathing suit with your titties hanging down because you want people to talk about you. But I love how you be trolling because she's trolling. Mm -hmm. uh, and you look good with that blue um, eyeshadow, That's too. Fun. I think you look great. I think you're beautiful. I've always uh, stood um, up for Lizzo, and I think that it's great because even when I was big, I mean, I wasn't that big, but when I was big, I, had, I didn't have a lot of confidence issues, but you... <laughs> I had some confidence, body confidence issues. So I do love the fact that she stands on what she believes in. Mm -hmm. And I do think a lot of these attorneys are just, it's just a weird thing right now for celebrities where these attorneys are just, you know, 
ambulance chasing lawsuits and finding anybody who will create a narrative about people. And uh, I don't know that this one's going to stick, but I'm watching it all the way through. Now, Lizzo, I'm going to text you because Lizzo should have been came on the show. I know there's things legally she can't talk about. Mm -hmm. And I know she wants to do the show. But we could have a whole conversation about a whole other, a lot of stuff than this, this mess right here. What do you think? What are you going to say? Yes, we need her. We need yes. her last year, this year, next. We need her. But I think she should take a note out of your book and Adele's book. She should disappear for like six months. Get on Ozempic and come back, walk out on stage with a flute, with a hourglass body and kill him. Okay, but she doesn't want to do that. But I, that would be no, so, oh. but she doesn't want to do that. I, and I think the thing that I want to be clear about is that I don't think she needs to gag these hoes <laughs> by losing a bunch of weight and, and oh, blowing on flutes as a skinny girl. I, in fact, I don't even know if I'd like her skinny. We don't know what her head going to look like. She might look different, whatever. It's less about that. It's more about <laughs> us as a society accepting that people are just different. But I do think as a society, we're accepting the fact that Ozempic is helping people get to a healthy place. And I think it took a while for that to be a conversation. First of all, that's a good Oprah thing. must have had a BBL because... <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Did you see the video of Oprah walking with that purple dress on from the back and that ass was pumped up? Ass Oprah, I, Oprah, I know Stedman is hitting that thing to the gristle. <laughs> I know he's hitting that thing to the gristle because the way you were walking, I was like, Oprah and Oprah and Oprah tooting that ass up at night. Oprah I, got she, a fatty, yeah. Oprah got a fatty. She got that little cinch waist, the little, you know, oh my God. the accentuating purple. Oprah, I ain't gonna lie. I had to play that one video you walk in. Matter of <laughs> fact, Johnny, let's just throw that video in right here. Oprah Winfrey walking. To, uh, tooting that little tutor for I'll everybody to see. And you know what? Again, that body sponsored by Ozempic because she's using the drug. She didn't turn it into a whole special now <laughs> to talk about the drug <laughs> that she used to condemn. But this is why you need people like Lizzo to say, no, fat lives matter. And <laughs> and we, would we love you healthier? Of course. You want to live longer. And maybe she is going to get healthier at some point. But right now, rock your fat ass on and keep doing you and stop listening to the haters because we love you over here. Bye. All right, listen, my girl Cardi B, Big Barty's back in the news. Um, Y'all try to call Cardi ghetto? Well, isn't that kind of what we love about Cardi? That she's hood. I don't know about ghetto. And there's a difference. And I love the ghetto, and I love the hood, and I love Cardi. Cardi's in the news. Um, and let me first start that start by saying that since before New Year's Eve, Cardi taking a hiatus on social media has been such a breath of fresh air for her, for all of us, for the world, because she was able to take time away mm -hmm. to drop new music, drop new visuals, pop out here and there, been in the studio every night. She came to our dinner, as you know, and looking good. Uh, but more importantly, I feel like she's found a level of peace where she's done a reset because people have been trying to trigger her along the way and she hasn't fallen into the traps. Well, she's she achieved so much success and grew from nothing to became one of the biggest rappers, of course, in the world. Uh, I called her my Cinderella. And with all that success comes constant criticism and everybody trying to remind you of your past, just like we talked about with Lizzo. Well, recently, my girl Cardi uh, had to defend herself from still being called ghetto. And I felt her, her, her pain and frustration and angst because it's almost like every time I do something, I'm reminded about love and hip hop. You have to, we have to let people evolve. And a lot of people just are stuck on people staying where they met them. Well, a TikToker named Ray Monte, who I don't know because I don't fuck around with TikTok like that, was named in an article asking why with all his impact does he not have major support and big brand deals? And Ray Monte reacted to the article and critics and said it's because he's ghetto. Now, while defending himself again, this time Ray Monte compared himself to Cardi B and that's where things uh, went left. Take a look. So I wasn't going to talk about this anymore because it was like, y'all know I don't like to drag things out. But the videos y'all keep saying, I'm ghetto and da 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 And it throws me off because none of my videos am I walking up to people selling them empty. They purse, give me everything you got. I don't think I'm as ghetto as everyone tries to make it seem. And what bothers me as a black person, you guys say that I'm ghetto. But Cardi B, who doesn't look like a visible black woman to me, and this is no shade to you, Cardi B. This is no shade. This is just literally a fact. And we're speaking on colorism and all those type of things. She is very, very ghetto. She's way ghetto -er than me. Me. She's way hotter, gangster, greasy with me. She was outside with the damn bloods. And y'all don't say that this lady is ghetto. Y'all don't say that she isn't marketable. It feels like everyone can be ghetto and 
and black besides ghetto and black people. And again, no shade to you, Cardi B. I'm just doing a comparison. My content has always been uplifting women. I've always said so many things about women, like to encourage them and be amazing. And, and I might make a little joke about a relationship or a boy or something like that. And I might say, bitch, but that don't make me a fucking gangster thug psycho, man. I literally don't get that. I have so much positive content that I don't even say a cuss word in. That is so uplifting with so many people, so many diverse Groups, ethnicities. So what do y'all want to put me in this ghetto, sad, black trope for? I am from the hood. Yes, I am. But I have layers to me. I am. I can have a deep, articulate conversation with you. Stop criticizing me. Another thing, I have always been an advocate for higher education. I have always sent people in college money for food. I tell people to stay in school. Get your degree. I talk to people with their 9 to 5 and say how people with 9 to 5 push the world. I talk about... um. Body positivity, all this type of thing. So what do y'all be wanting to make a All I say is shake your ass, shake your ass and turn on the damn cheap teeth because I don't. Well, first, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with you, Ray Montes, but I could tell you have a big personality. So I'm sure your content is um, is entertaining. I'm going to go check it out because I do agree with you on one hand that like you're not the sum of one video or one form of content and people need to be able to go viral for all the things I, I, I suffer from. Uh, being labeled certain things or I'm not, you know, people don't look at the whole picture of me, but that's the same thing I think that Cardi uh, uh, goes through. And I think sometimes when we use people to make a comparison about, you know, I could see how somebody w who's been under attack for the very same thing that you have, who's risen through the mud or from the mud like you have or like I have, feels some type of way. Now, I can tell you the trigger for me before I even watch what Cardi said, because I haven't seen it yet the colorism thing and this is the issue that i have because people who are darker skinned than me whenever we disagree on something or i make a point about something they go straight to the colorism thing as a way of making their point knowing or maybe not knowing that white people and racists started white supremacy started colorism and the dividing of our culture and our community so i'm going to take this as more of like an educational moment instead of attacking because maybe you didn't know i'll give you the Benefit of the doubt that like that, I know, knowing Cardi, that right there had to be the trigger, at least one of the triggers, because you said that she's not a black woman when she is black and people, they can't, let's start with Dominicans are black. Dominicans are black people. So you got to go back and look at your history. When you think about slavery, when you think about where we all come from, the motherland and how we were brought over here to America, that going back to what Raven said and even now what you're saying that we're all black people of color, you know, we're different shades, but that, that you, you can, we can have a whole conversation around how that happened. Right. I'm black in my mind. I am black. I don't look at, I'm not as black as his phone or not as black as you, or, you know, I'm, I'm maybe a little darker than her. I don't know, Cardi, maybe you're darker, but that's probably contour either way. You know, the colorism thing and her being called a non-black woman, that that's what did it. Now, one Twitter user reacted to the video, and this is what they said. This honestly has me weak with the Cardi B comparison because people have been bashing Cardi years ago, always calling her ghetto. Just say you don't like Cardi and, and, and stop saying her name. Well, you know, the other thing they say is that Cardi's a Mexican. Like, I, all, all day long on Twitter, I see Cardi's a Mexican, Cardi's not black, and the girl just be trying to take care of her kids, deal with her personal stuff, and put out music. That's all she literally tries to do. Cardi don't go to restaurants. She don't go to clubs. She don't be in the streets with celebrities. She don't do nothing but go to the studio, be with her kids, take them to school every day when she can be, uh, or or create. I don't even get to see her as much as I'd like to. So I, I do think that this is a little unfair. Uh, what do you think? Just right out the gate with what he said. My issue was when he said she's ghetto and greasy, and so don't like throw stones and hide your hands like you like to say all the time because you knew what you were doing because you said no shade, no shade, no shade, maybe 12 or 15 times, which means you were saying something shady. Like you knew what you were doing. Um, and I think it was to get a reaction because he knew Cardi would respond. I also like the whole reason why I and everybody fell in love with Cardi is because of who she is. Like it's exactly because of who she is. And I get I get that might have like caused her success to be a little slower, but I feel like it's, that's not the reason why he hasn't blown up. Also, I feel like this is really because he's a barb. Oh, he's a barb? Oh, well, I mean, then there's that. You know, the thing about it is that I don't look as Cardi as ghetto. I look at her as being relatable. I don't think that being she became real. this perfectly packaged brand. Yes, she's right. more well put together now, but she has well, a lot more resources. If you go look at me 10 years ago or five years ago, maybe even four years ago, I'm a different package smaller package too, by the way, 
than I was then, right? Um, and so life is about evolution and some of us stay stuck. And when we get caught up in this type of propaganda and these type of attacks, it makes people go, I don't want to be nothing like that. We all know there's a hater out there that doesn't like me really because they're a Jason Lee Dick writer and a fan. And, you know, they watch me and my rise and don't understand how I do it. And now they've lost all access to my world. And because they're starting out where I ended four years or five years ago, they have a lot of room to catch up. And I don't speak the person's name because we all know who I'm talking about. But this is the point, right? I continue to be great and excel at what I do to give those people more things to hate on me because when you hate on me, that actually makes me a lot better. So does it for Cardi. Well, Cardi responded to the tweet and she says she's tired of being called ghetto, something that she addressed all the way back in 2018. Here's what she said about ghetto comparisons. She said, it's crazy because when I became famous, people said I'm ghetto. Talk shit about my accent. Call me dumb because the way I speak. Say I got no cooth. Talk about my teeth, my braids, my two buns. Uh, and to this day, no matter what I accomplish, I still get called a stripper, all because I'm from the ghetto. People misinterpret me because apparently I'm loud and ghetto to this day. Call me a hood rat and all. When I sat down with Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, they called me a ghetto stripper. Why is it that y'all got to use me to make y'all comparisons? Because y'all only see the glory, but not when I get dragged 24-7. Leave me the fuck alone and out of y'all bullshit. I'm tired of people using me as their punchy bag. Leave me the fuck alone. It's my day off. Well... She lie, ain't no day off. She's been in the studio every day, so that's not true. But I understand what she's saying. Like, you know, get off her time. Leave her alone. Let her do what she's doing. Well, things continue to heat up because now Raymonte had something to say to Barty. Now that I understand he's a barb, that's, this is... A big barb. <sighs> he's a big barb? Mm -hmm. Hi, what makes him a big barb? His following? The lip syncing concert. Oh, so he's a fan oh. fan. Oh, okay, cool. All right, well, look, this is what Raymonte said to Cardi. Girl, why are you getting so mad at the comparison? I'm saying you are successful and reach heights that visibly black people, ghetto people have a harder time reaching. Uh, that act just like you. And I'm not saying you don't deserve success. So he goes on and on and on. You've had major campaigns, blah, 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 blah. Okay. She also has 169 million or something fans to followers. Hello. So that does yeah. kind of change the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she's a global, globally recognized music And artist. now he is too because of this. Well, this will die down though. This, yeah, this, yeah. Th these, these, these little blips on the internet they go away right mm -hmm. her music is going to last forever bodak yellow that whole album invasion of privacy is going to i mean it, it's reached a level of success that a lot of rap artists male or female have not reached and so and she's working on more music she just told y'all enough is enough but yet you still can't get enough cardi checked raymonte and uh, this is what she said that's not what you said you said nobody called me ghetto now you moving the goalposts <laughs> hold on a second that was a bar she ate that up. You know why? You know why I'm at where I'm at right now because I took all those notes and recognized what I had to change. I had to change the way I talk, the way I act, and the way I respond. And she went on and on. You can read that. Um, let me say this. I love how she's responding though, because mm -hmm. old Cardi would have burnt the internet down. And this is what I think a break has done for her. What do you think? Yeah, I think he was just trying to get a response out of Cardi so that this would go viral. And it's clear in all of his responses that's, that, that, that's what he was doing. And I think it does, I, I love that Cardi is not like going crazy and like creating a video responding to him and letting it frustrate her. Because like at the event the other night, she looks so beautiful and she looks so peaceful and happy. Um, so I just, I think she should just continue moving in that direction. Me too. I was going to say, if anything, the last time we saw Cardi, she was so shy and quiet. Like mm -hmm. all she did was smile and stay cute to herself. So this is like everything packaged up in a bowl is given class. And was, she ate him down. That was at our dinner last week where she was uh, very much at peace and had to hurry up and get out of there to go to the studio. Uh, well, Ray Monte tried to claim that this wasn't him coming for Cardi because of his allegiance with another rapper. Here's what he had to say. Who doesn't like you when you're on the timeline? Is that timeline? Mm -hmm. Saying you didn't want to be here. I just sent you something heartfelt. And anyway, just read this. I'll let y'all read it. Basically he's saying that it's not on no stand shit and that he's not, not using other women. You say, he, anyway, I'm not even going to say Because I think they had like a private conversation and then he brought up stuff in their private conversation on the timeline. He's just doing it for clout. He's doing it for clout. That's all it is. And He's trying he to did get... call her Mexican too, because she. This is, but this, but this is the blueprint for how you get Cardi to respond, and yep. she hasn't uh -huh. been responding, but she responded to that. This is what she said: uh -huh. "Are we on the timeline or the DMs? We were talking in DMs, and now you're back on the timeline. 
You can't gaslight me and I won't let you confuse people by bringing it. Okay, you can read this screenshot and go back to it. But why are you even talking to him, Cardi? You should have just left it alone. But you're getting better. You're almost there. Right now, you went from burning the internet down to having rational conversations. Um, I'm not even going to show you the rest. There's just more. <laughs> Fuck it. Show her the next one. This is what Cardi also said. Or this is what he was saying. Just screenshot it. <laughs> And then this is what she said. Okay, she talks about what it takes. She's giving him coaching. She's coaching a barb on how she's giving the Cardi class on how to get the bag. And did he respond anymore? Is that it? Good. Okay. <laughs> Cardi B is the clout. Mm -hmm. And the barbs and that girl have used her for years as a marketing plan but this is what i would hope that the barbs would get out of all this nikki is on a world tour that looks very successful she's selling i don't know if it's world tour but she's on a tour where she's selling out arenas with monica who we love let the girl be happy let the girl the girl look like the olympic then kicked in her body looked great the baby look happy the husband is uh, i saw the husband out in public which means that he's not tied to the house anymore Leave them all. I want everybody to be happy. By the way, Cardi looks damn good here. Mm -hmm. Ramonte, you could never. Right. Anyway, bye. Did he do it or did he not? I don't know, but did he? Got a lot going on after all the raids. Now he's continuing to trend in the aftermath of his viral and shocking federal raids. Now, last week we, you know, we recapped the whole Homeland Security raiding Diddy's coast to coast properties and the jet that was somewhere what shouldn't have been. And then he sold off the shares of revolt and celebrities reacted to all that. Well, this week more celebrities are speaking out, including some of his close friends and some of his family. Now, there's also more lawsuits on the way uh, for the Combs family. Since last week's show, Diddy's son Christian Combs. Uh, made headlines as the lawyer for his father's accuser, Tyrone Blackburn, who I don't respect, and I told you was an ambulance chasing liar, in my opinion, announced that there's a looming lawsuit against uh, Christian Combs for drugging, I'm going to say allegedly drugging, allegedly. and uh, sexually assaulting a woman named Jane Doe. Now, after filing at least four lawsuits against Diddy, Tyrone is now heading uh, uh, one against his son. The, identif the identity of the girl alleging uh, that he did this to her, the victim, she still has yet to be revealed and the exact details surrounding this whole alleged incident are still unknown. Now, I was recently on the Chris Cuomo show and I actually spoke about this very thing because I, I know Christian, I don't know his, him as much as I know Justin and Quincy. And on the show, I kind of got a little confused because there are three boys and two girls or four girls and two, three boys. Diddy got a lot of kids, and I was trying to think of which one I was talking about while I was live right outside of Cam's studio. But anyway, Christian and Justin and, and Quincy, I know them to be good kids. I went on Chris Cuomo's show, and this is what I said. This isn't Diddy's music sucks. You know, I don't like his new sneaker brand. You know, this is they're hunting this guy for major felonies. And Fiddy seems to be sitting on the sidelines cheering. Now, that could be for one or two reasons. One is... He knows things or suspects things about Mr. Combs. The other one is that he's just got a real perverse sense of competition. Well, I mean, listen, one thing I, w I know for sure is that when it comes to our culture, sometimes we cannibalize our own more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've seen the former president of the United States inspire the country to turn into Spider-Man and climb up the Capitol to overthrow the government in the middle of an election. But yet we haven't seen his mugshot or seen his kids handcuffed. I know I've known Justin for probably 15 years. I mean, I'm sorry, Quincy, his, one of his sons and and uh, and uh, his other sons, those are really good kids. So to see them in handcuffs, to see them put on display as criminals or to be uh, put into the conversation that they somehow are ushering underage kids into the compound for their their dad to have their way with them. Those aren't the kids that I know. Now, let me be also clear. I don't work for Diddy. Mm -hmm. I took my show off the network before all this happened. I'm not loyal to Diddy. We're, we're not friends by any measure, but I respect him and what he's done. If he's done something guilty and he's found guilty in court, then he should be held accountable like everybody else. But this new world of let me put everything I 
I want to say but can't say online without getting a defamation suit and a lawsuit. Let me leak it to the press and then have a person lose everything in order they, unless they give me a bag. I'm not a supporter of that culture either. And I just feel like what's happening right now, if there is some truth to it, I would love to see it come to light and see him be held accountable. But to lose everything and be, uh, you know, hung in a, a court of public opinion only makes it easier for other people that look like me to have that experience, too. And I'm not here for that. Well, now the claims are being described as serious, even though it's coming from an attorney that I've said and I've actually played private videos I recorded of him that he is a ambulance chasing uh, Gloria Allred wannabe uh, that's only been an attorney since 2019 that I think went and tried to extort Nicki Minaj, in my opinion, by bringing up the old uh, victim and then trying to gaslight her by accusing her of doing certain things in the press that weren't proven to be true yet or haven't been proven to be true in order to get a bag. I think he did the same with Tiffany Haddish. I know he did the same with Tiffany Haddish because they tried to drag me into that, saying that I was somehow attacking the victims or trying to shut down the victims when I wasn't. And now what I see what he's doing with Diddy, I, I now I get what's happening, in my opinion. Now, uh, seemingly reacting to the drama, Christian posted this cryptic message to his Instagram story. Stop with the cap. Now, Christian is the second Combs kid to be implicated in Diddy's whole list of lawsuits. Now, previously, producer Rodney Jones, a.k.a. Lil Rod. And this is the person that's been filing these lawsuits and putting everything in it that's been put in the press that's caused the raid, from what I understand. Uh, alleged that Christian's older brother, Justin, was present during an altercation at a recording studio in which Diddy or Justin allegedly shot a man. Simply referred to as G. Now, Justin's mom, Misa, she broke her uh, silence reacting to the rage, uh, raids, which saw her son and, uh, and Christian in handcuffs for the world. And this is what Misa said. She said, the overzealous and overtly militarized force used against my son's Justin and Christian is deplorable. If these were the sons of a non-black celebrity, uh, they would not have been handled with the same aggression. The attempt to humiliate and terrorize these innocent young black men is despicable. Enough is enough. Did Justin need several laser beams from firearms pointed at his chest? Did Christian need a gun pointed at the back of his head while he was handcuffed? How many times have we seen young unarmed black men not make it out of these type of situations alive? My son's attorney, Jeffrey Lightman, is investigating the excessive use of force, which was unnecessary and certainly not required by the search warrant. We will fight for justice utilizing every imaginable resource i'm not with the propaganda i won't lie just to be transparent i text misa after this i text her the link to the cuomo clip that i just showed you and she responded to that and i won't share what she said but i i know what's happening in my opinion and i think tyrone blackburn should be put in prison i think what he's doing and how he's misusing uh the judicial system in order to go after these celebrities to get bags is criminal now um I think the world is going to start shifting their perspective on what's happening because, and this is what I was telling him with the Tiffany Haddish thing, right? Or no, not, not Tiffany Haddish. This was when they were, him and Sabrina uh, uh, were going after T.I. and Tiny. They started wanting to add legs to it. And I go, I don't know. This is seeming kind of weird. You're adding all these different celebrities in there now because the internet, Hollywood Unlocked, the Jason Lee podcast loves salacious stories mm -hmm. and we feed off of it and you guys can't get enough of it. Meanwhile, you're attacking the celebrities, so they're losing everything and putting them in a vulnerable position that for celebrities that unlike a D that don't have hundreds of millions, they got what they got. So if you cut off all their sources of revenue and you box them into a position where they have to give you the money to go away, then you go away and say, sorry, everything's resolved. That's crazy. And I think should be criminal. When you see this play out now with the Suns, now them throwing the sun in this, what do you think? I think I think it waters down the case that they're going to have against Diddy if he is if he's guilty. And when people who have like false reports start to to jump in conversations to get money, it just really disrupts the opportunity for people who need justice to get it. So I think what they did to the kids, like Misa said, was unjust. They didn't need to cuff them and display them in front of the world the way they did. Uh, I think they did it because they were young black public figures and it was unfortunate and when i said what i said on the cuomo show people were attacking me oh you probably got a case coming one day soon listen you don't even have to do nothing to get a case that's what that's the whole point of what i'm saying you don't have to get a point and the thing about it is if you think somebody hasn't tried to extort me along my way of making millions, you are a damn fool of course people have tried to extort me but the thing about me is i keep good receipts and y'all know i don't give a fuck city council state council governor president the fat fat lives matter president i wouldn't give a damn what position i hold if you come for me you better have it buttoned up that button up better be better than the bottom in the bottom of a prison because i'm telling you right now 
when you come for me, unlike these other people, I'm going to use my voice to reclaim my time and my innocence. And that's the problem. These celebrities have all these brand partnerships and all these things that they're connected to where they can't advocate for themselves. And so they go and put cap or this or that. But think about it. This boy's father, who's already gone through whatever he's gone through with uh, Cassie, which we still haven't seen anything yet, right? Other than claims, because we didn't see it. It, it, didn't, it didn't go through discovery. Discovery is when you go through a process where you get to talk to people, interview people, depose people. And I'm going to tell you, as a black man, as a gay black man, I'm going to say this, whether it's... Uh, whether it's popular or not, and I love the unpopular opinion. There are black men sitting in prison today who did not commit the crimes that they've been accused of. There is a kid. What's the kid name that uh, was killed by the people and the mother let them see his body? Oh, uh, uh, Emmett Till. Emmett Till, a young black boy, murdered because a woman said he looked at her, did something, and they murdered and killed that young boy. We know that went true. The Central Park Five, we saw that play out. Donald Trump, your president, who you're going to vote for, said that they should have been killed, given the death penalty. Yep. They were found not guilty. Let me be very clear. In this country, historically, black and brown people, people have rushed to judgment, have hung them, have castrated them, have killed them, have incarcerated them, have taken them away from their families. And I'm going to tell you right now, whether it makes me unpopular or not, I'm not going to be a part of the circus that suppresses my people. Y'all can have it. So if you want to go on my Instagram or go online and say, he did it, take everything from him, kid, put a book. Let me put a red, let me put a gun beam on your kid's head and put them in handcuffs when they're good kids. And I know the kids. I know these kids. These kids are good kids. Let me do that to your kids. And then let's have the conversation. Because I've seen this at work with this attorney. Now, if it wasn't this attorney, by the way, I got to go on Cuomo in a little bit. If it wasn't this attorney, I'd be like, you know what? There may be some there there. I don't know. Because we still don't know. And to the victims, alleged victims, Allegedly. let me say that I don't know all the details because I ain't at Diddy House like that. I don't know. Did he do it? Did he not? Did they do it or did they not? I don't know. I can only speak to who I know. It's almost like if somebody came and said, Rob raped me. Nah. Rob probably got drunk and sucked your dick. But <laughs> but you you wanted it to happen, cause in this world, especially in our community, you ain't got to do no, it, ain't, it. Don't take much, right? Not to say that things don't happen, but when you know a person and you know them, it just don't add up for me. And now when I see who's behind it, I'm telling y'all don't know everything. That's why you come to Hollywood Unlocked so we can strip the veils back for you. We know these people. Tyrone Blackburn, I can call him right now. Uh, this person, in my opinion, is a criminal attorney who at some point will get indicted and all of you fools who've allowed the the the, the Pied Piper to string you along into the bullshit, you're gonna be feeling stupid. Uh, but I love that Misa's speaking out in defense of her son and, I, and, and it's sad to watch. Uh, and uh, this is, you know, I think this may be karma with people who just don't like Diddy and think he's the devil and think that he's a bad music guy and think that he's a thief and think that he's he may have been a killer at some point. I don't know. Um, but I think there's a lot of clout chasing happening that's dogpiling facts and lies. And now you can't tell the two uh, apart. I just feel bad that that is that should be illegal. No, to like for the drone shots to take photos of Christian and Justin mm. and cuffs because that's so crazy. They're public figures. It's news. I guess. I mean, you're raiding the compound of one of the biggest culture leaders in the in the fucking entertainment business. This is a house where I'm telling you, I've been there where Beyonce, Jay-Z, all the biggest celebrities, politics, everybody, they've gone there. And so now you've been to an actor's house to turn to a sex party after dark? Yes, I have. I mean, I've I've had experiences with Did he want you to stay in the pool? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did he want the house cleared out? Yes. <laughs> And did some people stay in the pool? Yes, they did. Naked. And, it, and is this an... They were having sex. And is this an actor that anybody would believe did it? No. So we know that there's these actors out there. We ain't got to say their names. But they're out there. Now, I don't know. What you, what you want to think? Hurry up before I get in trouble. I mean, I do... I, look, if, if Diddy is found guilty, then he deserves everything that happens, right? Legally. But I think the witch hunt of everything around him is is kind of crazy, like going after his kids in this kind of way. Um, so I think people should just be careful to rush to judgment about everybody that's being pulled into it. But I'm sure there are some victims out there that deserve to have their story told. But like, don't I don't think we should be rushing to judgment because we saw his kids get cuffed and paraded in front of us. So. Yeah. I yeah. agree. Well, um, after all of this, all the Diddy raised, Boosie began questioning why none of his friends were speaking up. 
to defend him. And 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 I agree uh, with you, Boosie, because these are all the people that fought to get in Diddy parties. They couldn't wait to be there. And Diddy's parties, they laid out the food. And if you need prayer along the way, T.D. Jakes would be by the bathroom. That's just where I met him. But the reality <laughs> is, is that he wasn't busting it open, but he was there. Now, Stevie J, who's been speaking up and hanging out with Diddy amidst all the lawsuits, continued to stand 10 toes down for the mogul during a TMZ interview. This is what he said. I don't know what my, whatever someone does in their bedroom, that's what they do. I don't got nothing to do with that. I'm just here to say that I've never seen my man doing anything foul like they talking about. None of it. All of it. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I've never I'm seen it. I've known him for 29 years. And then it's like with guys like, like 50, you know what I'm saying? Like Uncle Tom cast like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you now you want to put me... I don't know if y'all saw the post where 50 posted about me. Of course, you guys seen yeah, it. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, 50 um, has been going after Diddy and everybody associated with him for months now, ever since the Cassie lawsuit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you can't brush under the rug. I, I don't see anybody um, um, reporting about what um, tatted up Holly said about him beating her up and about, you know what I'm saying, his other baby mom saying beating her up. I just look at it as, you know, he wants to bring the black community down worse than than anyone else. How How is that so? I said what I said on my post and I'm standing on that too. Now, since he didn't accept what my offer to him and he want to continue to be a comedian, why don't you go make some movies with Michael Blackson and don't talk about me? Okay. If you don't want to fight, if you don't want to donate to charity, donate the bread to charity and fight, don't, don't stop being a girl and talking about dudes. I find it funny that you know, when they first cru try to crucify somebody, they go through the media first. And they're just flooded with lies and propaganda. I'm not concerned about this n Curtis. I mean, this dude Curtis. You know what I'm saying? He's Uncle Tom, and that's just what it is. I'm going to speak on a thousand percent of what I know to be true about my guy. Well, Stevie J is standing on business. I, I love the fact that he does have somebody standing up for him. I mean, this is also, though, Stevie J, you did release a sex tape with you and Eve years ago. So you did kind of exploit her in a way that was predatory. Uh, not calling you a predator, because, you know, I like you, but it's got to be true. You, you, you released a sex tape on Eve, uh, which by we know now is illegal. Um, well, and we also know that 50 is a troll. And we do know that, like, I don't know that you hate black culture, but when you're a part of black culture and that's just your culture, it's not black on black crime. It's just you talking about the culture. So you are a troll and you do a lot of weird shit, but I'm here for it sometimes. And you've hated Diddy for a long time. Even though now he's talking about sleeping with your baby mom, we knew that there was something there. And she said that you raped her. God. And now R. Kelly is speaking out behind prison walls. <laughs> he was trapped in prison. Well, he's untrapped. R. Kelly spoke out uh -huh. in defense of Diddy. Now, here's some people you just don't want. To speak out what well, he did, he's facing, uh, you know, as Diddy faces these uh, sexual traffic and abuse and rape claims. During a conversation with WAC 100, how did WAC get a conversation with R. Kelly? WAC, why are you always in the middle of shit? You should be over there trying to figure out if Adam 22 is gay running around with that, that, that white gay boy talking about it was an April Fool's joke. Okay. <laughs> well... Kelly, who's serving a 31-year prison sentence for sexual abuse of minors, sex trafficking, and more, insisted that Denny's innocent. This is what he said. That's all over the news. I see, we see that. We watch that. And what's crazy is, what you know, I know, you know, because we just been in the jersey forever, is, is once they, and I hope they don't, but if they detain him, that's when all nigga, niggas, motherfuckers going to be lining up with their hand in there. So I'm saying, man, see, the bad part about him, this is what I don't understand about this, all this shit. Motherfucker, if there was a time, right, where this was a play, this was y'all party, this was y'all, nigga, and, and, like, if you was um, a participant, right, and you of legal age, I don't understand what all the hoopla, all of a sudden, is against the wheel, it's against the wheel. Man, what's so you just came back to 300 parties, motherfucker, against the wheel. <clears throat> All this shit, you got to damn near get a turn on your camera, let a motherfucker tell you who they is, put their ID up, let a motherfucker tell you where they at, because any given Sunday, right, when a motherfucker want to go bad, they can extort you or cover the accusations. Shit, man, crazy. That shit is crazy, man.
It's crazy. That's what I say, motherfuckers, motherfuckers gonna be out there laughing and, make, and making comedian jokes and doing all that other shit on the radio and everything else, but they ass could be next. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what's so yeah, fucked up about it. It's so stupid. They're so stupid, they don't even realize the move that's going on. I mean, it's crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, that's why I don't believe none of the shit. I mean, no, you can I tell me about Bundy. Up, bro. You can tell me about anybody in now. You can tell me uh, the, on the news the weather is the sky is blue. I'm not going to believe the shit, though. No. Because I'm listen, in it now. I know what they did. Yeah, like, listen, I told at, when it first started with Cassie, I said, yo, nigga, this is a stick up move. All the was that nigga, I just came out and said, hey, listen, these are my sexual preferences. Yes, I'm bi or whatever the fuck, and these right. motherfuckers been trying to extort me, and I'm tired of it. They know that I'm in the music industry and boom, boom, boom. Nigga, they would have ate her up and, and yeah. stood, but but now they using that. They using that against him. That, but now it's getting to a point to where, you know, it's getting to a point to where it's like, nigga, you 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 gonna have to say something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he, not, but he, 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 he ain't flee though. You know. Nah, he ain't. They, nah, nah, he ain't. They, they didn't raid it. You know, they ran up in his cribs, but you know. Yeah, I saw that. Crib, get, this how you know it's weak. You know, usually when they run up in their the house, they coming to get you too. Yeah. They look at, they still searching and looking. Like, that nigga ain't on the run. Or that, they ain't telling him to come turn himself in and no shit like that. They grounded his plane because they seen him moving. He wasn't even on the plane. They wanted to make sure he wasn't because they they probably didn't restrict his passport and shit as of yet, as of now. You know, but yeah, this shit is crazy. Yeah, but that's how it all started, though, Wack. You understand? Started. No, I know. No, I know. It's all that because they don't, you know, it's it's crazy, man. I know, but see, they know fucking with him. He got some money, so they know they got to come right. They know if they come half stepping. He do got the money to, 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 to fight. So they ain't finna, they ain't go. Well, I do know this. If they do put him in cuffs, they only put him on cu- in cuffs because they got a definite, they got something at that point. So, yeah, that, ain't, that, ain't necess- that ain't even necessarily true right there. Well, they, well, they, they feel like they got this enough. Call is from they, the they got prison. enough. They want they, you if they want to plan to get you or if it's a conspiracy, yeah. anything. They can put you in cuffs, bro. <laughs> no, that's real. And I've been telling people, I've been preaching. I said, yo, one thing already taught me, what I didn't know, is we going off this state shit. Nigga, the law of the land when it comes to the feds is 18 across the board. You niggas in Jersey with the 16, Nevada and Atlanta, that's the state. But if the feds want to come in and pick it up, Ain't yep. nothing the state could do to help you or save you. You can't say what well, the state. Yep, the law of the land federally is 18. I said, I didn't even know that until, you know, I thought, you know, whatever the state said, that's what it was. She is. Which is crazy. Like, it's crazy. I don't know why the federal law don't force state law to be 18 across the board. It's crazy. Now, what do you think? It should... Should Diddy's attorney say R. Kelly stand down? Yeah. Yes, please don't speak on our behalf. He just added more <laughs> flames to this whole forest fire. No, and we're not saying rainbow flames. We're just saying flames, <laughs> right? Young baby flames. I was well, and, and you know, WAC one hundred don't care either way. WAC just loves going viral, and WAC has learned how to make the internet work for him. WAC, you know, my, I bow down to you uh, because I know you know what he you're really doing. He is Hollywood unlocked too. He knows everything he's he's the he's the 99 cent version <laughs> oh don't do that to whack now whack doing his thing i'll fuck whack uh well look uh i'll be sure though and this happened i was in the room i'll be sure the biological you know nine day you know anyway father diddy's adopted son quincy says the writing's been on the wall and that he's been warning the public about diddy for years now recently at ben crump's event that i Gave an award out to. I was sitting right there when he said this. He had a lot to say about this whole thing. Take a look. We are going to be producing the Albie Shore Life Story. So hold on to your hold on to your britches, and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. Oh! 
So the word on the street, allegedly. Allegedly. Is that he was poisoned or somehow they tried to kill him. Uh, because remember, he was speaking out about the mother of his sons, Quincy's mother, Kim Porter, who died. He was claiming that she may have been killed. And then all of a sudden he had a stroke. This is getting crazy. Well, 50 Cent reacted to the video and said, Diddy he got your head cracked? Which prompted, I'll be sure to respond with this. Fifth, you already know. Everybody talking grimy but missed the hidden July 2012 allhiphop.com story when B reached out to all law enforcement agencies to assist and spat all the current uh, activity verbatim like Nostradamus, then silence niggas, called him crazy. Not too crazy after all, huh? Andre Harrell also asked Al B to co-exec and produce the Uptown Records story and soundtrack, and now he's ghost, okay? Happy Easter. Well, Andre Harrell's not ghost. He's also dead. I don't believe, I don't believe that Diddy killed Andre Harrell. But again, I don't know where all the bodies are buried, and maybe Diddy does. Well, in 2012, allhiphop.com article that Albie was referring to, there was a lengthy PSA from him and it alleged that someone was trying to silence him and that if anything happened to him, his lawyer already knew who to go after and had all of their skeletons. Well, found, fans found several allusions to Diddy and 10 years later, Albie Shore was in a coma. I can't even push a button over here. In addition, I'll be sure revealing his own life story documentary. 50 Cent has been promoting a documentary on Diddy called Diddy Do It. There's also at least five production companies actively pursuing Diddy's story, reaching out to individuals connected to his world, including former associates, dancers, executives, and collaborators like Cassie, whose lawyer says that she's cooperating in the federal probes against him. Now, Diddy's losing royalties on streams. His airplay on the radio is down more than 88%. He lost his school. He lost his liquor deal. He lost his clothing deal. He okay. lost his network. He lost it all. Hmm. Or you can say all the deals just died. <laughs> Did he do it? Yes. Did he do it? You think it? so? He murdered Kim. I know he that. I know that for sure. Yeah, I would be careful. Say it. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> And then we heard allegedly. allegedly. And by the way, Marino only works here Monday through Friday. <laughs> I don't want no smoke, Mr. Combs. And then allegedly that car blew up. From Kid Cut. What, Kid Cuddy's car? Mm -hmm. No, Kid Cuddy's car blew up from, wasn't that Kanye that did that? No. That was oh, what that was Diddy? Oh, Kansas. that's right. Because, uh, duh, there's just so much going on in the world. Cars are getting blown up left and right around here. People dying left and right. It's crazy. So is this karma catching up with him, basically? Correct. But do we think that he raped all these people, sexually assaulted mm -hmm. all these people? I think there was some abuse of power, yes. Yes. Everything's Allegedly. coming to Is it an abuse of power, though, if somebody wants to be near the powerful and they do anything they do to, can do to get there, including offering their ass and their vagina to get it, <laughs> they get it, then they turn around and say, because that happens too. Yeah. But yeah, I think, that's I don't true. think that's, a, well, in a sense, that's still an abuse of power, but I think... That that's not always the case. I think sometimes people are forcibly put in situations they don't want to be in sexually. Sometimes people are drugs. I'm not saying he did those things, but I'm saying these are allegations that seem to be on the table. So what what are these drugs they're using? Because like, where do you do people supply the drugs? Do you go somewhere and buy the drugs? Is it an over the store drug? Because I don't even know. Like roofies? I've been roofie before. Okay, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. What are roofies? I'm asking for education. I don't know. Where do you buy a roofie at a pharmacy? Don't ask me. I don't even know what it looks like. We're not researching it to tell you how to do it. I just don't understand. Like, is it something where somebody, huh? So do they just drop it in your drink? Yes. Let it fizzle, and then you like you watch on Law and Order, and you don't even taste it when you're drinking it, and then all of a sudden you passed out, Short -term and then you wake up and you've been raped. Damn, that takes an evil, sick person to do that. That's nasty work. Yep. He did dress up as the Joker. Take a look at this video of him as the Joker. <laughs> Life imitating reality? Listen. All right. Well, either way, that's the show. Don't know if Diddy did it, but uh, we ain't doing it no more today. Go Take it off the screen. It's time for thoughts and prayers.
In the words of the late great B.I.G., Mo Money brings Mo problems. Just as Diddy. I mean, the problems just keep piling on him. Not only is he facing sexual assault lawsuits, but now his son is being accused as well. And we know Boosie was asking for Diddy's friend to stand up and defend him. But Stevie J and R. Kelly, really? No offense, they're both legends in their own crafts, but they both were also caught up in their own sex tape scandals, and one is currently in prison over his tapes, about a 14-year-old. Now, I don't know if I'd want them defending me, but at least Diddy still has some people on his side because these internet streets are unforgiving. Just ask my girl Lizzo. Y'all have dragged and criticized her so much that she was ready to check out of the game. But like Cardi, who's also consistently attacked for being herself, Lizzo is silencing the noise, putting her fans and fat first and staying focused on her music and other projects. Because what did Beyonce say? Always stay gracious, but revenge is your paper. It doesn't matter what the haters say. They can call you fat. They can call you ghetto. But baby, they can't call you broke. And we also can't call Raven Simone African-American because she's an American. Y'all better stop playing with Ray Ray. If she wants to identify as such, who are we to tell her differently? Even if she gonna sit there and tell it to her white wife. Because when Tamar's team tried to tell Krishan differently, things went left and nobody saw that coming. Not even Jane Wright Chanel's tooth. But we wish you well on your healing journey and best wishes to everybody else that we talked about today. That's it for this episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. Make sure... She can't wait White folks can't wait to clap, baby. <laughs> anyway, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast everywhere it streams. Make sure you click the little subscribe button. Make sure you share it. Make sure you tell all your friends that this is where we are. We got Joyner Lucas up next on the show. And it's funny as hell. You know, he does this whole pausing thing. He does it on the phone with me, too. Well, he paused me to death, so guess what? On the show, I think he, he paused me to death there, too, right? Mm -hmm. Take a look. This interview, I stayed away from the pausing. Well, they're coming. Pause. So you're in Bad Boys. For, is it because you're a bad boy? Cause see, you know, I, I know you. Should I pause that? Can I pause that one? You didn't think you was gonna come here. We'd just be deep I the whole time. I, I have. Can I pause that? Right. That's a pause right there. Pause. <laughs> I hope everything fits. Pause. <laughs> I can't sit courtside with my and watch the NBA game. Pause. <laughs> if we're gonna go viral. Nah, I ain't trying to go viral. What the? I'm not, this is not about to be okay. a. Wait. Pause. So that's another luxury of being independent where you just decide when, when you feel it. Yeah, you decide. Pause. This dude has paused me more than I've paused anybody. I think I had a pause one time on this interview. Not yet. No, you, I think you did. No, I didn't. No, I think you did. No, I didn't. As soon as this camera cut, I'm getting it. But pause. Sorry. That's it. Make sure you tune in for the rest of the show and go watch the Jason Lee show uh, episode with Joyner and make sure you follow, follow, follow us on all social media where we are. All right. Till the next one. Peace. The Jason Lee Podcast.